Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. I am really really excited for this one because it's a video that I've never done before so this is the very first time and when I was prepping for it I just had like the best time so I think maybe if you also really like these videos maybe going forward I can do more of them but we are going to be talking about some books I really hope you can't hear that okay I think they're done backing up. Today we are going to talk about some of the books that are going to be released the second half of the year that I'm really looking forward to. I kind of got a late start on it so I didn't get to do it like at the half year mark. So we are going to be talking about books that are being released from August all the way to the end of the year. And I have 18 books on this list. I was honestly shocked. I didn't think that I was going to have this many. So we kind of have to just like dive right in and get through them. I'm going to kind of give some blurbs and reasons on what interested me, what piqued my interest when I first looked at the books, and we'll just go from there. I think that this will be really fun. I ended up separating these books by the month that they're released. So we will start off in August. And the very first book that I want to talk about is Mothballs by Sole Otero. And the publisher is is Fantagraphics. This book has actually already been released because it was translated from Spanish, so it's going to be released in English on August 13th, and I just think that this is one that I want to give a read in Spanish because I feel like a graphic novel would be so much easier for me to digest, but Sole Otero is an Argentinian comic book artist, and I saw the cover of the book and immediately wanted to add it to my list just based off the cover. It looked really cool. The art style looked like something that I would really, really love. The second thing that really pulled me in was just like the immediate blurb. And it just starts off with, in this moving family saga, a teenage woman uncovers the hushed history of sexual violence that shattered her grandmother's life. For the synopsis, it's San Martin, Argentina, 2001. Upon her estranged grandmother Vilma's death, 19-year-old Rocio moves into a house haunted by memories. Seeking a deeper understanding, Ro delves into into her family's history and uncovers the episodes of violence that betrayed and shattered Vilma's dreams. All the while, the familiar scent of mothballs permeating the estate serves to remind Ro of the ineluctable spell of the past that she must break in order to forge her own path in life. Tender, heart-rending, and leavened with biting humor, Mothballs is at once a moving family saga and a poignant reflection on the need to hold fast to one's identity, despite how painful it can be. So that just sounds like something that I would really love to read about, and like I said, the art just, it looks so good and like something that I'll really enjoy. So I'm really excited, and I've never read, I don't believe I've read a graphic novel that has been translated so or maybe no I definitely have I read Thieves but I think it'll be really cool to try and give this one a read in Spanish so the next book that is going to be released in August is Napalm in the Heart by Paul Gosh this has been translated from Catalan by Mara Fay Let Letum I believe. The release date is August 13th, 2024. I don't remember if I said that. And it's being published by FSG Originals. And this one just kind of sounded really, really interesting. I feel like the cover also pulled me in, but I also feel like the cover for most of these kind of pulled me in. That's like the first initial impression I had, but it just sounds so fascinating to me, and I think that it'll be like a really, really interesting one to read. And as for the synopsis, this novel takes place in the near future, devastated by war and unspecified natural disaster. A young man and his mother cling to survival at the edge of a forest. The young man spends his days taking care of the home and exchanging letters with his lover, Boris, who lives in a city on the other side of the woods. But after the young man commits a brutal act of desperate violence to protect his mother, he leaves home to find the mercurial Boris, who travels with him on a search for safety. When the journey's demands threatens his precarious relationship with Boris, as well as his own moral compass, the young man is forced to confront whether in his efforts to stay alive he has become the very danger he has fought to escape. I'm excited to read a book that has been translated from Catalan, and yeah, that sounds so, so good to me. The next book that is being released in August is Scrap by Kala Henkel, and this is being released August 20th, 2024, and it is being published by the Overlook Press. This is another one where the book cover pulled me in, and when I looked her up, I realized that she has also written other people's clothes, and I haven't read that one, but I remember seeing that cover. This one sounds really interesting to me. Just the plot of it, it kind of feels a little bit like it's thrillery. I'm not a big 
thriller reader but every now and then I do crave one and I think that this one could be pretty pretty fun. So for the synopsis, recently dumped and stuck with a mortgage, artist Esther Roy wants to burn the world but instead she reluctantly accepts a scrapbooking job from the wealthy Naomi Duncan. The scrapbook's a secret birthday gift for Naomi's husband Bryce. The conditions, Esther must include every piece of paper she's been sent, must sign an NDA, and must only contact Naomi using the burner phone provided. Otherwise, she'll spoil the surprise. As Esther binges true crime podcasts and works through the near 200 boxes of Duncan detritus, detritus, <laughs> I think that's the word. She finds herself infatuated with the gilded family. Until mid-project, Naomi dies suspiciously. When Esther becomes convinced that the husband killed her, she uses the scrapbook's trove of information to insert herself into the Duncan's lives. But the more Esther investigates, the further she is dragged to the scorched earth of her past and the famous artist who paid her to disappear. I think this sounds so interesting, like from the beginning, even just like working on this scrapbook and all the conditions that are set, I'm like very curious on what's going to happen in this one. All right, and now we are moving into September releases and I have five listed here. The first one is If Only by Vigis Jorth and this has been translated by Norwegian by Charlotte Barsland. This is set to be released on September 3rd, 2024, and it's going to be published by Verso Books. And I haven't read anything by Vigis Jorth, but I do want to read Is Mother Dead? So when I saw this one, I was like, might as well also add this one to the list. And I read the little blurb, and that also just like made me want to read more from this author, but also this book. The little blurb that pulled me right in is a passionate and groundbreaking bestseller from one of Norway's most highly regarded and award-winning novelists for readers of Annie or No, A Simple Passion, and Coco Malore's Cleopatra and Frankenstein. So I read that and I was like, okay, I'm listening. Like, I loved Simple Passion. I haven't read Cleopatra and Frankenstein, but then I saw that and I was like, should I be? So if you've read Coco Malore's Please let me know if you think I should read it and if you think I'd like it. I will give it a chance because I don't know, for some reason, that book has just never really called to me, even though I don't necessarily know what it's about. But maybe I should give it a read, especially because it's blurbed here. But as for the synopsis, it's about a young woman aged 30. She married in her early 20s, had two children. It is winter, January and minus 14 degrees Celsius. White frosty mist around the parked car, around the spruces, the mailbox on its post. But higher up, the sky is blue clear. The sun has come back. She has written in her diary that she is waiting for the heartbreak that will turn her into her true self. She has an impending sense of doom, or possibly her own death. So opens Vigis Jorth's groundbreaking novel from 2001, which melds the yearning, doomed potency of Annie or No Simple Passion with the scale and force of Anna Karenina. It asks, can passion be mistaken for love? And proceeds to document the destruction a decade defined by such a misconstruction can yield on a life. So I definitely want to give that a read. That sounds really fascinating. I think just the fact that she like writes in her journal that she's just waiting for the heartbreak that's to come that will turn her into her true self. I don't know. I'm very, very curious about this character and being in her perspective and just like the themes in general of this one, it sounds like something that I will really, really like. The next book that I want to talk about that's being released in September is Still Life by Katherine Packer, and this is set to be released on September 10th. This is going to be published by W.W. Norton and Company, and for the synopsis, it's a profound and piercing tribute to messy webs of queer friendships and what is left behind in transition. Everything in Edith's life is approaching disaster. Her writing career is stagnant, her love life is a mess, her ex Tessa is marrying a man, her teeth are rotting in her skull, and her best friend Val is dead. Still life volleys between the present and the recent past. Edith was a bumbling college boy, pre-transition, in love with Tessa, enamored by Val, and drowning in Boston. Now Edith is racked with guilt over Val, a sometimes lover, trans mentor, purveyor of estrogen pills, and wisdom from a life on the fringe. Val was everything Tessa wasn't and everything Edith needed. So yeah, this just sounds like something that's going to be like such a beautiful read and heavy, but I also think that I'm going to enjoy reading about Edith dealing with the grief and loss on multiple different levels. So this one just sounds like it's going to be really, really good and I am excited to 
get to this one at some point. The next book that is set to be released in September is We Will Be Jaguars by Nemonte Nikimo, and this is set to be released on September 17th by Abrams Press. This is Nikimo's memoir, and I love a memoir, so I'm really excited for this, and I think it'll also just be really interesting to learn more about her as an activist and also about Ecuador and the Warani tribe that she was born into. So for the synopsis, born in the Warani tribe of Ecuador's Amazon forest, one of the last to be contacted by missionaries in the 1950s. Nemonte had a singular upbringing. She was taught about plant medicines, foraging, and storytelling, and shamanism by her elders. At age 14, she left the forest for the first time to study with evangelical missionary group in the city. Eventually, her ancestors began appearing in her dreams, pleading with her to return and embrace her own culture. She listened. Two decades later, Nemonte has emerged as one of the most forceful voices in climate change activism. She has spearheaded the alliance of indigenous nations across the upper Amazon and led her people to a landmark victory against against big oil, protecting over a half million acres of primary rainforest. Her message is as sharp as a spear, honed by her experience battling loggers, miners, oil companies, and missionaries. In We Will Be Jaguar, she partners with her husband, Mitch Anderson, founder of Amazon Frontlines, digging into generations of oral history, uprooting centuries of conquest, hacking away at racist notions of indigenous peoples, and ultimately revealing a life story as rich harsh and vital as the Amazon rainforest herself. So I'm super excited for this one. I think that this is going to be such an informative memoir and I think it'll just be so fascinating to learn more about Nemonte and the impacts that she's had as an activist. So very, very excited for this one. And up next is Intermezzo by Sally Rooney. I feel like it would have been so rude of me to not include this one, but I will say I've only read one Sally Rooney. Normal people, that's the only one that I've read, and not because I don't want to read any of her other books, I just, I need more time in the day. I feel like I, there's so many books that I want to get to by authors that I've really enjoyed, and I just feel like I haven't had the time, which I need to change that. I just need to make more time, but I had to include this one, and I've heard that it's a bit different from her other books, but like really, really good. Did I say when this is being released? I don't think I did. Let me back up. So the release date is September 14th and it's going to be published by FSG Books. I read the synopsis and I was immediately like, this is a book that I need to read. I know that I will really, really love this and the themes of grief. So the very first blurb that I read that immediately grabbed my attention was an exquisitely moving story about grief, love, and family, but especially love. Aside from the fact that they are brothers, Peter and Ivan Kobeck seem to have little in common. Peter is a Dublin lawyer in his 30s, successful, competent, and apparently unassailable. But in the wake of their father's death, He's medicating himself to sleep and struggling to manage his relationships with two very different women. Ivan is a 22-year-old competitive chess player. He has always seen himself as socially awkward, a loner, the antithesis of his glib elder brother. Now in the early weeks of his bereavement, Ivan meets Margaret, an older woman emerging from her own turbulent past, and their lives become rapidly and intensely intertwined. For two grieving brothers and the people they love, this is a new interlude, a period of desire, despair, and possibility, a chance to find out how how much one life might hold inside itself without breaking. Just seeing that it's about grief, but also love, and like two siblings, like I feel like I am going to really, really enjoy this book. So added it to the list. I don't know if I'll get to it. I don't know if I should read that next or if I should read Sally Rooney's other books, but it's on the list. I had to include it. And then the final book that I'm super intrigued by that's going to be released in September is Intervals by Marianne Brooker. And this is going to be published September 24th. And I believe it's being published by Fitzcarraldo. Carldo. Fitzcarraldo. I don't know why I struggle with that one, but I actually remember seeing Siska talk about this in one of her reading vlogs. And since I heard her talk about it, it's just been on my radar ever since. But this one is also a book that covers grief. So that's also a huge reason why I'm adding it to my list as well as it's a memoir. So I think memoir, grief, those are books that I'm gonna pick up. So for the synopsis, what makes a good death? 
a good daughter. In 2009, with her 40s and a harsh wave of austerity on the horizon, Marianne Brooker's mother was diagnosed with primarily progressive multiple sclerosis. She made a workshop of herself and her surroundings, combining creativity and activism in inventive ways. But over time, her ability to work, to move, and to live without pain diminished drastically. Determined to die in her own home on her own terms, she stopped eating and drinking in 2019. When I was taking a look at this one, I noticed that there was so many blurbs praising this book. So I did pick one of the blurbs and it's by Eleanor Cleghorn, who is the author of Unwell Woman. And I haven't read that book, but it is one that I like to give a read. And Eleanor says, Intervals is an endlessly moving and profoundly generous telling of what it means to give and receive care. Stunning in its intimacy and expansive in its political purpose, Brooker's writing invites us to think deeply about the relationship between giving care and honoring life. Through visceral, tactile details of creating, working, making, and tending, Brooker brings us into the spaces where caring happens, where life and its endings happen. A rare, revelatory, and truly radical book. I'm immediately sold on this book. I think it's going to be really, really tough to read, but I think it is a book that's going to be so important and just excited to get to it at some point. All right, so those were all the books that I'm really excited about in September, but now we're moving on to October, which is my birthday month. It seems like there's the most books coming out in October, or at least ones that I'm really, really excited for, because in October, I have seven books that I am interested in. And the first book is The Message by ta Coates, and this is going to be released October 1st and published by One World. I haven't read Between the World and Me, but that's one that I do own, and I just need to get to it. But I also really, really want to read this one, and it just sounds like it's going to be really, really interesting and important also just very informative. For the synopsis, ta Coates originally set off to write a book about writing. In the tradition of Orwell's classic politics and the English language, he found himself grappling with deeper questions about how our stories, our reporting, and imaginative narratives and myth-making expose and distort our realities. The first of the book's three intertwining essays is set in Dakar, Senegal. Despite being raised as a strict Afrocentrist, Coates never set foot on the African continent until now. He then takes readers along with him to Columbia, South Carolina, where he meets an educator whose job is threatened for teaching one of Coates' own books. There he discovers a community of mostly white supporters who were transformed by the racial reckoning of 2020. And then in Palestine, Coates discovers the devastating gap between the narrative we've accepted and the clashing reality of life on the ground. So... I think that those three essays are going to be fascinating to read about and I just think it's so interesting that Coates is going to be exploring a little bit more about like storytelling and how stories are told and reported so I'm just like really really intrigued by this one and I think that it's just going to be such an important read. So up next is Model Home by River Solomon, and this is also going to be released on October 1st, and it's published by MCD Books. I very recently, and by very recently, I want to say like two months ago, <laughs> read Sarland, and I really, really enjoyed the writing, the storytelling. I thought that it was such a great read. I haven't wrapped it up yet, but that's to come and ever since then I have just been curious about River Solomon's writing and going through their backlist and reading their other books so when I saw that this one was going to be released I just immediately added it I don't actually think that I'll be able to finish it or maybe I'll power through but it is about a haunted house so I'm kind of intrigued because part of me wants to read it to scare myself, but I also know that I'm like such a wimp when it comes to anything like haunted house related. But for the synopsis, it's about three Maxwell siblings who keep their distance from the lily white gated enclave outside of Dallas where they grew up. When their family moved there, they were the only black family in the neighborhood. The neighbors acted nice, but right away bad things, scary things. The strange and unexplainable began to happen in their house. The Maxwells, steered by their formidable mother, stayed put, unwilling to abandon their home. Terrors and traumas be damned. As adults, the siblings could finally get away from the horrors of home, leaving their parents all alone in the house. But when the news of their parents' deaths arrive, Esri is forced to return to Texas with their sisters, Eve and Emmanuel, to reckon with their families past and present, and to find out what happened while they were away. River Solomon turns the haunted house story on its head, on Earthing the dark legacies of segregation and racism in the suburban American South. Unbrindled, raw, and daring, Model Home is the story of secret histories uncovered and a queer family battling for their right to live, grieve, and heal amid the terrors of the contemporary American life. So, 
This sounds so good. I want to give it a read and just excited to read more of River Solomon. Oh, we have a special guest. We have a special guest. Hello. She's going to lay down. There you go. There you go. Okay, so the next book that is set to be released in October is Obligations to the Wounded by Mubanga Kalimankwento. And this is set to be released October 8th. And it's going to be published by University of Pittsburgh Press. I'm like not really well versed when it comes to like literary awards. I barely know any of them. I feel like I just know the ones that I always hear about, but I noticed that this was the winner of the 2024 Drew Hines Literature Prize, and the winner was selected by Andy Cruz. So I saw that and I was like, okay, I am definitely intrigued because I read How Not to Drown in a Glass of Water by Andy Cruz and I loved it. So this is a collection of short stories and the synopsis is Obligations to the Wounded Explores the Expectations and Burdens of Womanhood in Zambia. And for Zambian women living abroad. The collection converses with global social problems through the depiction of games, social media feuds, letters, and folklore to illustrate how girls and women manage religious expectation, migration, loss of language, death, intimate partner violence, and racial discrimination. Although the women and girls inhabiting these pages are separated geographically and by life stage, their shared burdens, culture, and homeland inextricably link them together in struggle and triumph. I don't typically read short stories I feel like I want to, I really want to get into them, but I think that these stories sound like they will be so interesting and I'm just really curious to read a book by a Zambian author because I don't think I have before. Okay, so up next is Love Can't Feed You by Cherry Lu Sai and this is set to be published on October 8th as well. So we have a few October 8th releases and it's going to be published by Dutton. For the synopsis, it's a beautiful, tender, yet searing debut novel about intergenerational fractures and coming of age. Following a young woman who immigrates to the United States from the Philippines and finds herself adrift between familial expectations and her own burning desires. Love Can't Feed You is a stunning, heartbreaking, and compressed look at coming of age, shifting notions of home, and the disintegration of the American dream. It asks us, what does it mean to be of multiple cultures without a roadmap for how to belong? So this one sounded really interesting to me especially because it's a coming of age story and it seems to deal with some intergenerational trauma. So immediately wanted to add this one to my list. The next book that's going to be released in October is The Wood at Midwinter by Susanna Clark. And this is set to be released on October 22nd and it's being published by Bloomsbury Publishing. So I saw that this was on the list and I was like, I loved Piranesi so much. And I do want to read Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. Norrell? It is a bigger book and I just don't want to commit to that yet, but I do want to give it a chance. But I saw that this book was much smaller. It's just a short story. It's 64 pages long and it sounds like it takes place in the same world that Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell take place in. So I was thinking maybe I could start with this one and then eventually I can make my way to Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell and maybe it'll be nice because I've kind of read a story that takes place in that world. But for the synopsis, 19-year-old Meredith Scott is an unusual girl. She can talk to animals and trees and she is only ever happy when she is walking in the woods. One snowy afternoon out with her dogs and Apple, the pig, Meredith encounters a blackbird and a fox. As darkness falls, a strange figure enters in their midst and the path of her life is changed forever. Featuring gorgeous illustrations, truly worthy of the magic of this story, this is a mesmerizing must-have addition to any fantasy readers bookshelf. I wanted to add this because I'm curious about it. It's short and I really loved the writing in Piranesi. So want to read more by Susanna Clark. The next one that is on this list that's set to be released in October is Mother Archive by Erika Murillo and it's set to be released October 22nd and published by University of Iowa Press. So this is Murillo's memoir and it just like sounds so fascinating just by the very first sentence of the synopsis. A family murder kept secret. The mysterious disappearance of her father and the systemic erasing of family photographs. A turbulent relationship with her mother. Layers of trauma and abuse. In Mother Archive, Erica Murillo reconciles these demons of her past by searching for and seeking out the roots of her family. Intertwining memories with archival family photographs, news clippings, film stills, and artistic images, Murillo re 
revisits her childhood growing up in the Dominican Republic, a place and time riddled with a history of violence and a tradition of erasure. Spanning three generations across three different countries, this memoir works as a map in which the author traces incidents in her family history to help her understand herself and her own experience as a mother. That sounds so good. I love a memoir and also like I think it's just going to be really fascinating for her to look back and kind of put pieces together. This is kind of making me think a little bit of Liliana's Invincible Summer and how Cristina is having to like piece things together and I really enjoyed that format for Liliana's Invincible Summer so I feel like maybe this one could work really well for me. That first line immediately pulled me in so I added it to my list. The next and final book that's being released in October is Life Form by Jenny Slate and it's set to be published October 22nd and it's going to be published by Little Brown and Company. And I read Little Weirds a few years back and I went into it thinking it was going to be something else, but I ended up loving it way more, and I feel like it's one of those books that I feel like some people will either love or hate, and it was just like, it felt so whimsical, and I loved the way Jenny's brain works, and like the whimsy, and just like sometimes she would go on these tangents, and I was like, I don't know where we're going, but it's beautiful. I just really loved her writing. So when I saw that she was releasing another collection of essays, I immediately added it. So for the synopsis, a wild, soulful, hilarious collection of genre-bending essays depicting the journey into motherhood as you've never seen it before. Told in five phases, single, true love, pregnancy, baby, and ongoing, through luminous, laugh-out-loud, funny, unclassifiable essays that take the form of letters to a doctor, dreams of a stork, fantasy therapy sessions, gossip between raccoons, excerpts from an imaginary olden timey play, obituaries, theories, about postpartum hair loss, graduation speeches, and more. So I just think it's probably gonna be so good. It is about motherhood, which isn't always something that I gravitate towards necessarily, but I feel like because I love the writing in Little Weird so much, I'm just going to really enjoy this one. And also just like getting her perspective on motherhood, I think it'll be a good time. Those were the books for October. Now we are moving into November releases, and for November I just have two books. The first book is The Man and the Banana Trees by Marguerite Sheffer, and this is going to be published November 5th, and it's going to be published by University of Iowa Press, and it is a collection of short stories. So it sounds really weird. I'm just going to read the synopsis because that's what really like confirm that I want to read it. It sounds amazing and fun at the same time. The stories in The Man in the Banana Trees take place in the past, present, and future. From the American Gulf South to the orbit around Jupiter, we meet teachers and students, ghosts and aliens. An ice cream consultant in the year 2036 predicts a devastating flavor trend, and a disgruntled New England waiter investigates a mysterious tanker crash. Although wildly varied in setting, length, and genre, a thread of the fantastic unites these stories. As characters struggle to understand that thing lurking at the edge of their perception, something sinister or maybe miraculous. So I don't know, that just sounded so trippy and fun and I want to give it a go. Okay, the next book that I'm really excited about that's going to be released in November is I'm Laughing Because I'm Crying by Young Me Mayer, and this is going to be published November 12th, and it's going to be published by Little Brown and Company. And this one is Young Me's Mayer, Young Me's Mayor. And this one is Young Me Mayor's memoir. And I feel like I'm going to really enjoy this one because Young Me is also a comedian. So I feel like it'll be really funny. We'll see. But for the synopsis, it starts off with, do you know what happens if you laugh while crying? Hair grows out of your butthole. It was a constant truism Young Me Mayer's mother would say threateningly after she would make her daughter laugh while crying. Her mother used to cheer her up in moments when she could tell Young Me was overtaken with grief. The humorous saying would never fail to lighten the mood, causing both daughter and mother to laugh and cry at the same time. Her mother had learned this trick from her mother, and her mother had learned this from her mother before her. In I'm Laughing Because I'm Crying, Young Me jokes through the retelling of her childhood as an offbeat biracial kid in Saipan, a place next to a place that Americans might know. She jokes through her difficult adolescence where she must parent her own parents, a mother who married her husband because he looked like white Jesus and the singer of the Bee Gees. And with humor and irreverence and full-throated openness, she jokes even while sharing the story of what her family went through during the last century of colonialism and war in Korea. While reflecting how years later their wounds affect her in New York City as a single mom, all the while interrogating whiteness, gender, and sexuality. 
So I feel like I'm going to really love this memoir. I can also joke through the pain sometimes, so I feel like I'm just gonna really relate in that aspect, and I'm just fascinated to learn a lot more about Young Me's life and what she's kind of been through. So added that one to my list, I feel like I'm going to love it. And we have gotten to the last month and the last book because in December I only have one book. I don't know if I just didn't come across any other books that are being released in December or if maybe December is just not a popular month for book releases, I'm not really sure. But the book that caught my attention that's going to be released in December is No Place to Bury the Dead by Karina Sainz Borgo and it was translated from Spanish by Elizabeth Breyer and it is set to be released December 10th. It's going to be published by Harper Via and Karina Sainz Borgo is a Venezuelan author and also a journalist. A searing novel of loss and resilience that illuminates the often overlooked human dimension of the migrant crisis, reimagining the border as a dreamlike purgatory bridging life and death. In an unnamed Latin American country, a mysterious plague quickly spreads, erasing the memory of anyone infected. Angustias Romero flees with her family, but their flight is tragically cut short when she loses both her children. Consumed by grief, she finds herself within the hallucinatory expanse of mesquite. Exploring what we are capable of and how far we will go when we have nothing to lose, No Places to Bury the Dead confirms Karina Sainz Borgo's importance amongst the voices of modern Latin American literature, merging thriller, western, and classic tragedy. So yeah, I think that this one's going to be interesting. The fact that it's like thriller, western, I'm not sure if it's going to work for me, but I am really fascinated by the concept of this like play that spreads and erases the memory of anyone that's been infected. I feel like that kind of makes me think of another book. Is it The Memory Police? I think that's the one where people forget like objects or something like that. I'm just really curious about this concept and I just want to see how it's executed. That is the last and final book. We got through 18 books. I am shocked that I talked about this many books and for this long, but this was so, so fun. Please let me know if you liked this if, because I would love to do this next year for 2025 books. I would love to know if there's any books that I missed that you are super excited about and you think that I would really enjoy, please leave them down below. So I'm always looking to add more books to my TBR that's never ending. That is it. I've been talking for so long, but I hope that you are doing well and that you enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next video. Bye.